guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be so much fun. We are talking all about eyeshadow palettes. I am sharing with you guys the 15 palettes I would pick if I could only pick 15. I recently saw Tati do a video where she actually did only pick 15 palettes to keep within her collection. This video is inspired by that one, but we're gonna do a hypothetically because I am attempting to audition for season seven of Hoarders, and I think my eyeshadow palettes can maybe get me there. I am quite attached to my eyeshadow palettes as I have often mentioned, but I did go through everything with one question in mind. If I could only keep 15, which ones would I pick? I think some of these might surprise you guys. Hope you are excited about it. You guys know I love talking about eyeshadow palettes. Before we jump into the video, special welcome to any new visitors to my channel. I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed before you leave and that your notifications are turned on. And with all of that said, let's get into the palettes. All right, guys, I've got a nice stack down here. This was very hard. I feel like anytime I do any sort of ranking video with palettes, I always have to say this was very hard. We're gonna jump right in. These are in no particular order. I will insert for you guys some close-ups, a couple of swatches. Let's start with this beauty right here. This one's actually kind of on the fence. It was between this and a ColourPop palette, but because I already own it, I had to pick it. It is the Pat McGrath Mothership 7 palette. You guys, I'm still having a hard time justifying the price tag on this one. I do think it's an amazing, Amazingly beautiful palette. The packaging, I mean, it's incredible packaging. The formulas inside are really fantastic, but it was so, so, so expensive. And I even got it on sale. I can't imagine spending full price for this thing. I just don't know that I could ever get to the place where I could do that. But because I already own it, I certainly couldn't let go of it. I do think it's pretty. It is a really beautiful, very me color story. It gives you a little bit of color along with a lot of neutrals. Fantastic shimmers. This one in particular, you guys, I mean, this shade, I don't think it justifies this very pricey, pricey palette, but there is something truly special about this formula right here. It's just so incredibly sparkly and shimmering, which you guys know I love. Beautiful palette, not one that I could part with now that I own it. If I was to go back in time, would I have bought it again? There's a question mark there. I know that might offend some of you Pat lovers out there. I know there's a lot of diehard Pat lovers out there. I do think they're great. I just, that price tag just makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> For my next one, I'm gonna go with the Artemis palette by Alter Ego. This is the only Alter Ego palette that I that made it into my top 15. This is meant to be a dupe for the Metropolis palette by Natasha Denona. I don't own that palette, so I can't verify how close the formulas are in here to that one. I've heard some people say they didn't think this one was quite as good, but I'm a big fan of Alter Ego's eyeshadows. I think they're a great alternative alternative to Natasha Denona. They're affordable. The packaging is still really nice and I love that they include or at least attempt to include the variety of formulas that Natasha Denona has. That is one of the things I love the most about Natasha Denona is the variety of her formulas both in her mattes and her shimmers. It just there's something special about the different textures from her eyeshadows and this I think is a good nod to those. Now there's quite a few in here that are those kind of is it I think it's the cream to powder formula the creamy sort of matte formula. I don't think the formula of these are quite as nice and is pigmented. Hers seem to be a little bit more pigmented, build up a little bit more quickly, but you can definitely get there with these. They give you a similar look. The shimmers in here are beautiful. The traditional mattes are fantastic in the color story. This color story is just so, so me. I feel like I should have put this in my top palette picks for fall video. For some reason, I forgot to talk about this one, but this is like one of the best fall palettes that I own. Great palette, great price, one that I definitely couldn't part with. Another one I had to go with from Anastasia Beverly Hills is the Jackie Ina palette. It was between this and the Soft Glam. I ended up going with this one because there's just something special about this. I like that it has a little bit more color because I do have a lot of neutrals sprinkled throughout the other palettes that I'll be including. And there's so many unique shades inside here. And just as a whole palette, I really enjoy playing with this palette. If you are someone that likes your neutrals but likes to occasionally dip your toes into color, this is a really fun palette to do that with. Love all the formulas inside here. There's some really unique shimmers in here that I really love. This green, this Zam shade right here. I love how this looks on your lid. It's so such a pretty color with such a pretty amount of shine to it. I just absolutely love it. Very fun palette. This is definitely up there like in my palette ranking videos that I've done. This seems to always make an appearance and it's still one that I would have a hard time parting with. The next one that I would include is from Tati Beauty. It's the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Palette. This palette, I think maybe like a like maybe six months ago even. I'm not sure this would have quite made it into my top 15, but I did pull this out recently for a video and then I kept using it shortly after that. I mean, I've used it a lot over the year and a half. How long has this palette been out? It's been more than a year and a half. The last two years have been kind of a, a big blur. Initially, I really liked it, but the more I've used it, the more I love it. And I see how great this palette is, mostly for its formulas. Now, I do think it's a, it's a nice 
color story. It's cut, you get a lot of repetitiveness, but I love the idea behind the different formulas inside here. These glitters up here have really grown on me. I think they're the best glitter formulation that I have in my collection. They're the perfect particle size, which I'm very picky with pressed glitters, the size of the particles. And then these are just absolutely perfectly done. They're very reflective, but they're not too chunky. They just look really flattering on the eyes. And you guys, I'm telling you, there's something about like the pigment quality, especially of like the mattes and the sequin shades. That's just really, really high quality. It's a really fun palette to play with. I'm always so happy with the looks that come out of it. And while I don't think the color story is like exciting, the textures are. And that's why I would definitely include this one. The next palette is the one that I think is going to surprise. It kind of surprised me that this made it into my top 15. So this is kind of how, just real briefly, this is how I kind of do things. So I pick out the ones I think like, yes, I really love that palette. And then I come up with a stash of like 30 palettes. And then I slowly start to narrow things down. And this made it through a couple rounds of cuts. And I'm talking about the BH Cosmetics Naughty Palette. Now, this is obviously a Christmas palette. It came out, oh, when did this come out? You guys, I'm, I, I'm having trouble. Now, I don't love the packaging on this. I so wish that it wasn't so obviously Christmas themed, but you guys, the shadows inside here are so amazing. This might be the best color story that I own in my entire collection. It is a larger palette, so obviously you get a lot of variety in here just by nature of it having so many shades, but they are the perfect perfect ratio of matte shimmer colorful to neutral in my opinion this is one of the best color stories that has ever been done there's plenty of color in here if you want to do something a little bit bold or if you want to do something very bold but there are so many beautiful options for neutral looks in here and it covers every range that i love you get your berry tones you get your greens you get your bronzes or oranges or golds lots of browns lots of pinks lots of transition shades there's even a couple of really nice pressed glitters in here i just can't say enough good things about this palette sadly i think it's been discontinued if i can find it on bh cosmetics website i will link it down below but i'm pretty sure they don't sell this one anymore but if you happen to pick it up pull this thing back out especially as we inch towards the holiday season. I just think this thing is so, so great. I'm excited to pull this one back out as the holidays get a little bit closer. I mean, this is one that I, I did even use this a couple of times in the summer. It's one that I'll use all year long, despite its overly festive packaging. Definitely one of my favorite color stories that I own and one that I couldn't part with. From large and colorful to small and more neutral, the next one that I picked is the Persona Original Identity Palette. I have the old packaging. This palette is quite old, but it is still incredible. It is a mess because I do use this palette quite a bit and it is a very messy palette because you get some really smoky shades in here. You guys, this is one of the best formulas out there in my opinion. I think Persona makes such a great matte and shimmer formula, especially her shimmer formula. I would say is the most universally flattering shimmer formula. I know that I've said that before, so I'm sorry if you've heard me say that four times already, but truly if you are someone that's very picky about the type of shimmers that you like on your eyes, maybe you're a little bit older, or you don't like to emphasize lines or creasing that you might have, this is such a flattering shimmer formula that still gives you a lot of punch, a lot of reflectiveness, but does it in such a beautiful way. It is stunning. I love it. One of my very best neutral palettes that even after all these years I continue to reach for pretty regularly. So next I have a couple of palettes from Juvia's Place. This one was tricky. I ended up picking just two palettes from Juvia's Place. Before I tell you, I'm curious to know how many of you guys can guess what two palettes from Juvia's Place I picked. Pause, think about it. Let me know if you were right. First off, this one right here, the Magic Mini Palette from Juvia's Place. This is just such a fun color story. It was kind of between this one and the Nomad 2. The Nomad 2 is a little bit more neutral and oh gosh, I really do love that palette. But this color story is just so much fun. This is the palette that I'm wearing on my eyes today. I did something a little bit more colorful. I put a pop of this pink up through my crease and then I added a little bit of this dark shade to my outer corner and then I have a mix of these two shimmers on my inner or on my inner and outer lid. Such a fun palette. I love Juvia's Place matte and shimmer formula and I love their color stories. They kind of stretch me a little bit which I love but they always give me enough neutrals. I consider this like a pastel palette. I mean you do get some dark and bold shades in here but there are a lot of pastels in here and I love that because I think pastels are a really fun way to play with color that's not too intense or over the top. This is one of the palettes that I love pulling out when I'm in the mood to just kind of play. Every time I open it, I think, hmm, what combination should I try out today? Kind of like I did with this look today, and I am never disappointed in the final look. Fantastic palette, really fun one if you like color. Next from Juvia's Place, I had to go with the Nomad palette. I'm sure you guys are not surprised if you've been watching me for any number of months. I would say for, let's say for a year, you knew this palette was going to make it into this video. I still stand by. This is definitely my top five of all palettes 
ranking. There's just something so special about this palette. I'm sure most of you own it because I have talked so highly about it. And maybe you disagree with me, but I still, every time I use this, I fall just deeper and deeper in love with it. There's just something so special about these unique, but still kind of neutral colors. I love them so much. You know how much I love this shimmer in the center that I'm always talking about. It is so flattering on the eyes and it goes with everything else in here. Very nice, fall tone palette that you can also use not just in the fall. I pull it out every couple months to do an eye look with it because I love it so much. I'm actually getting awfully close to hitting pan on this center shade so I probably should buy a backup before they do something crazy and discontinue this one. Have they yet? I hope not. Definitely one that I could not part with. Next, I had to include the Sydney Grace Enduring Love Palette. This is another one that is way up there. If I was to rank my top five to ten palettes, this would definitely make it way up there in the rankings. It is such a stunning palette. I have the light version. They do have a deep version where they do modify a few of the shades in here. I don't know what else to add that I haven't already added. You guys know I am a massive fan of Sydney Grace eyeshadows. I have almost all of her singles. Her formula is exceptional and I hope as you guys are looking at the swatches right now as I'm swatching them on the back of my hand, I mean even I as I was watching my viewfinder looking at me swatch these shadows on the back of my hand, I'm always impressed with how incredibly rich and pigmented they are. If you like metallic shades, Sydney Grace's metallics are next level. They are the best out there in my opinion. And by the way, if you're new to Sydney Grace, her metallic formula that I'm talking about is called her press pigment formula. So just so you're aware, that's her formula that's going to give you like liquid metal on the eyelids. This is such a good one though. Such a fun color story. Fantastic formulas as I already mentioned 10 times. And one of the palettes I would have to include. All right guys, we're getting up there. Now the last palettes that I have are all Natasha Denona palettes. Now these, I'm not ranking these as like my top five. We're not really doing, as I mentioned, any sort of order here. And I did not include all of my larger Natasha Denona palettes, but I do have quite a few of them here. So let's go through them really quickly again in no particular order. Starting with her newest one, the Retro Palette. I'm really enjoying this palette. I know I had some criticisms with it initially. It is quite monochromatic, but when it comes to berry tones within my entire collection, I mean, this one is just so well done. If you like your berry tones, if you like soft pinks and purples, this is so, so beautiful. Great formulas, great shade range, perfect variation from light to dark. You get a good variety of each range, like a good variety of darks, a good variety of mid tones, a good variety of light shimmers, and even a light matte, which I really love. Very fun palette. I'm really enjoying this one. And I want to mention one more thing. I was recently doing makeup on a friend for a special occasion. I was using this palette and especially using this on someone else. I really noticed how exceptional Natasha Denona's formulas are, especially her shimmer formulas. There's something so very multidimensional about some of her shimmers, especially her lid shades, that is so incredibly multidimensional and beautiful that you don't get with all shimmers. And I noticed that on someone else more than I notice it on myself. I feel like I love these against my, not better judgment, but my more frugal judgment because they are expensive and for whatever reason, I feel like I've collected them all, but I'm coming to find that that's the reason why. There's just something special about her formula. The next one I'm including is the Glam Palette. This is such a good one. It looks so blah. Every time I look at it in the pan, I'm like, it almost seems uninteresting, but I've used this palette enough to know that the looks that come out of this are exceptional. They are so pretty. If you like cooler tones and beautiful shiny lid shades, this is going to give you that. I think Glam as the name is the perfect description for this one because the looks are just so subtly glamorous. I don't know how else to explain it. Fantastic one. One of my top, top favorites from Natasha Denona. I do think the Alter Ego Shadow Kiss Palette is a good alternative for this one. If you don't want to spend the $65, I think that one is pretty darn close as far as formulas, multi-dimensional shimmers. They're very, very similar, but because I have the Natasha Denona one. It's one that I would not want to part with. Next is the Safari palette. This one has been discontinued from Natasha Denona, but I love this palette. It is one of my very favorite color stories from her. It's one of my favorite color stories in my entire collection. Now there are no shimmers in here, which you guys know how much I love my shimmers on my lids. I almost can never do a makeup look without a shimmer on the lid. In fact, I never do a makeup look without putting shimmer on my lid. I just don't. It'd be like going out the door without wearing shoes. I remember exactly the day that I bought this one. I was up in the middle of the night for whatever reason and I saw a DM or a message from someone on Instagram saying that this was on sale for half price. So I went over to the Natasha Denona website at three o'clock in the morning and I ordered this palette and I'm so glad I did. That was the best decision I've made at three o'clock in the morning. Normally those decisions don't go very well for me, but it's a fantastic palette. Now this, these are all just her traditional matte formula. None of these are like the cream to powder formula, but I do love that formula as well. And I love the colors in here. You get the perfect range of mostly neutral, but leaning colorful 
colors in here. I absolutely love them. These ones, like this top blue-green row right here, are so, so unique. I love them so much. Definitely a palette I have to keep around forever. I'm also going to go with the Sunrise palette. This is another one that's definitely up there in my ranking. I love this color story. It is so unique. Of course, other than the Alter Ego palette that has duped this palette, which I do think is a good alternative. This is such a good palette, you guys. These, these two yellows right here, they're just so incredibly intense and vibrant, but they're so fun to pop into the crease with some of these neutrals. I always love the looks that come out of this palette. They are absolutely stunning, very unique. When I'm in the mood for something very vibrant and sunshiny and summery and fun, this is a palette that I often like to reach for. It's like my go-to summer palette when I'm in the mood for summer kind of feels. That's the one that I like to reach for the most. Next one is the bronze palette. This is one that I could not part with. It is so pretty. I do have criticisms with this one as well, but combined with the other palettes that I've selected so far, I can reach into something else if I want something a little bit brighter on my inner lid, which has always been my criticism with this palette, is everything in here is very mid-tone, which I like a good mid-tone, but I usually like to combine it with something vibrant and bright. But that said, if you're into warm bronzes, which I most definitely am, there are some beautiful variations of bronzes inside. Really beautiful palette, fantastic formulas, and one that I would most definitely have to keep around. Okay, we're down to the last 15th palette. It is my last Natasha Denona palette that I'm including, and it is the Zendo palette. I'm a big fan of this one. I've talked a lot about it. I think I ranked this midway through the year. It was ranked pretty high in my ranking palettes that I've tried out so far in the year. I want to say this was in like the top two or three, and it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I've talked this mint green shade to death. Every time I open this for you guys, though, I feel like I need to mention this is such a great shade. Not one that I was initially excited about, but after using it, it just is so special. It's unlike anything else that I own, which is saying a lot. As someone that owns a lot of my shadow belts, whenever I find a shade that is very unique, it stands out to me. And this one is unique, but also beautiful. This is such a fun color story. It's a very me color story. The pinks in here are nice and soft. You get a duochrome, you get some greens and some tills, which I do love. A nice matte dark brown. The only thing that's not inside here is a champagne, but again, if I had to kick out this mint green, I think I'd keep the mint green even over a champagne, which is a staple that I rely on, but a really fun palette if you're into a bit of color, and another one that I would have an exceptionally hard time letting go of. All right, you guys, and that is it. Those are the 15 palettes that I would select if I could only keep 15, which I know is excessive, and it's crazy that I think that's difficult, that I don't know that I could survive with just 15 palettes, but if I had to, these are the ones that I would pick. What did you guys think? Did any of these surprise you? Are you surprised that there are some palettes out there that didn't make it? Maybe the Born to Run palette or some of the other palettes that I've raved about before? Again, I love all my palettes. There are a lot that I would be very sad to part with, which is why this video is hypothetical. But if I had to make that choice, I would be very happy and feel very satisfied with this selection of color stories and formulas. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know, maybe not what your top 15 are, but give me your top two. What are your top two palettes that you could never ever part from? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. That is all I have for you today. Thank you guys again. I hope you'll consider subscribing before you leave if you haven't done that yet, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye!